Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to uh, explain what is assembly language and machine code. I'm going to use the program from my previous uh, video as an example. Uh, so if you have not if you have not watched my previous video on writing an assembly language program, you may want to just watch that first before watching this um, video. Okay, so let's look at uh, machine language. Machine language basically is the language that the CPU understands without the need for any translation. Uh, the language itself basically consists of zeros and ones. Um, just a reminder, the CPU is a digital uh, device. Uh, basically, that means it operates on zeros and ones. Now, all programs, whether it's written in assembler or in, in a high level language like C, must be translated into machine codes that basically zeros and ones in order to be executed. So let's take a look at assembly language. Uh, assembly language basically uses a mnemonics and what are mnemonics? Basically mnemonics are symbolic names. An example, uh, one that I've used in my uh, example, that a program that I've used is MOV. Uh, basically this is a short form for MOV, move. Now assembly language uh, program is unique to a particular processor. In general, uh, assembly language are not compatible with other processors. Okay, let's uh, examine the structure of an 8051 assembly language program. Now, um, here what I've done here is um, I've repeated the code for from my uh, previous program in my previous video sorry um, I'm going to focus in my next slide on these two ORG and end and these two lines here basically these are the instruction so ORG 00H basically indicates the start of the program and END uh, basically it indicates the end of the file. Now main here with, this, with the colon is the label. The label here basically is a name for the uh, memory location. So rather than using the uh, addresses, we use the label to indicate the location. So here uh, in this instruction basically uh, I prefer to use the word copy rather than, uh, than the word move. So it will copy this uh, data uh, 0F into register A, which is the accumulator. And the second instruction basically copies the contents of A to P1, and P1 is port 1. Right, so ORG and N, as I mentioned uh, earlier, they are what we call assembly language directives. And ORG is short for origin. Basically, this tells the assembler the start of the program. And END, N, is to inform the assembler that this, this is the end of the program. Notice that the directives and comments and uh, the directives are not translated into machine code. All right, let's look at the, uh, the 8051 assembly language instruction. Basically, each instruction consists of four fields. The first one is label. The second one is mnemonic. Third one is operands. And finally, the, third, the fourth field is comments. I repeated the first instruction of my program here. So this is the label, this is the instruction, and these are the comments. Now the instruction, I've repeated it here. Remember I said it, uh, that it consists the instruction, uh, 8051 instruction, uh, is let assembly language instruction consists of four fields. So the, this one is mnemonic. So here, 
is the mnemonic and this is known as the op code the operation code and this part here is the operand now the operand is divided into two parts this is the destination and this is the source the source is in this instant is the data and the destination is the register A now um, all those code uh, assembly language instruction that use that we have encountered earlier needs to be converted or translated to machine code so you need what we call an assembler an assembler basically is a software and basically you feed in your source code all right into the assembler and the assembler will then churn out something called a hex file uh, I'll, I'll explain this hex file a little bit more later but in addition with the hex file you will also get other files like an object file or the list file I'm not going to talk uh, much about this at, uh, in this video I may make another video to describe the uh, the function of the assembler later so let's look at the, the source code here and uh, we will attempt to translate the source code into its machine code manually now for this exercise you will we will need the uh, 8051 micro instruction set now you can get this uh, from the internet uh, quite easily so if you google up 8051 microcontroller instruction set you'll uh, you'll get you, you'll be able to get a copy of it so you need a copy of this and we take the first instruction and we go through the uh, instruction set and to locate the instruction that we need and this happens to be this one here mov a comma hash data all right so that's the instruction that we need and we need to identify the uh, hex code in this case it's 74 so we will repeat 74 here and we will repeat 0f here without the, uh, the h so this instruction translated into hex code is 740f now for the second instruction which is move port 1 comma a and the uh, instruction that we need is this one here I'll explain this uh, in a, uh, a little bit more in a moment and the hex code for this is 5f so we will write down 5f and then for this one for the operand the code would be 90 now you may ask where did this 90 come from now 90 is actually the ad the hex address of port 1 p1 now if you remember uh, the 8051 has four ports port 0 which is p0 port 1 which is p1 port 2 which is p2 port 3 and which is p3 each of these port p0 p1 p2 p3 has a unique address and the address for p1 is 90 so we're for this instruction here the hex code would be 5f90 now we take this uh, repeat the uh, the uh, program here and what I'm doing here is I'm going to put in the hex fill in the hex code and so this program here can be represented by the hex code here right what I've done in this uh, here is I've translated each of the hex code into its binary equivalent for example 7 4 would be uh, 0 1 1 1 
zero one zero zero. Now, uh, if you are a bit rusty with your hex to binary conversion, you might want to uh, go along and watch my video on hexa to binary conversion. So each of the hex code is being converted to its binary equivalent. Again, here I repeated the uh, program and I repeated the binary code. Each you have to remember each of this program is a set of binary numbers and this is what the CPU understands, not this. Okay, we are back in the uh, ED Sim 51 simulator. So what I've done here is I have repeated the program that we've been talking about here um, what i like to demonstrate is uh, when i assemble this code when i hit this assemble code button uh, we should be able to see the uh, hex code in the code uh, memory now if in your edc51 you haven't got the code memory display what you need to do is you uh, you need to click on this button and make sure that it's in uh, code memory so uh, now you should not see the data memory in, if you have data memory what you need to do is to click on this uh, button and it's not working okay so we're back in code memory sometimes you need to click it uh, several times I, I don't know why uh, but uh, anyway so you need to make sure this is in code memory so now I go to uh, the assembler uh, button and click on it and you will see your hex code here in the code memory all right Okay, that's all I, I want to uh, uh, show you is that when you have assembled this, you will find your hex code in your code memory. Okay, thank you for uh, watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.